Hey, what's going on, ecosystem? Welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel. It's Tuesday Nights Live, and this is the Car Shipping Business Channel. My name is Jay, and I'm your host. You know, my goal every Tuesday night is to bring you another trade show level business presentation to you wherever you are, because your business deserves the latest in auto transport business news. And if you're busy, and I know you are, you can skip ahead. If you're watching on demand, uh, here in a few minutes, I'm going to give the show lineup. And then what you can do is, in the video clickable time codes below this video in the description, you can click on time codes. Go ahead and use them. Skip ahead. Please leave a comment. Remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Thanks for watching ATI. I sure do appreciate it. Uh, so tonight, let's talk tracking. Okay, so uh, for the individual, GPS tracking can make you feel a tad uncomfortable, right? But if you're a fleet manager or a client, you need to know, have those vehicles been delivered? Have they been picked up? Uh, did they sit somewhere for a while? Are they ready to go? Where are they now? And is everything okay? Do you need to schedule something? Are they lost? Is everything on schedule? What do we need to anticipate? What's going to happen next? Well, tonight we have Jason Wolf. He's the CEO of Vilog Tracking Solutions. And he is with us. And he's going to give us some background, company information. Then we have his CTO, Gil Messerman, with a live software demo. And that is going to be really interesting and lead us into, we've got a big panel discussion tonight. Uh, we have vehicle tracking logistics panel professionals from different verticals in automotive. We have Matt Landstra of Jack Cooper, Jason Hawk, Black Widow Imaging, Ricky Locene of Trinity Rail, and we also have Joel Hawk of Pogue Chevrolet, Robbie Oliphant, M LMR Companies, Jeff Grandstaff, Gold's Gold Star Resources, and Hendrick Saar of Cart Group. So this is going to be an incredible show. I do want to make sure, mic check, one, two, three. You can see me. You can hear me okay. I think that's the case. Uh, so please let me know. It's going to be incredible. Please join the live chat. Ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business. It's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Going on everybody welcome back to auto transport intel it is tuesday nights live i sure do appreciate you taking the time and joining us on a tuesday night for the latest in auto transport news let's do this here let me tell you what's gonna happen let's go ahead and start by saying please feel welcome at auto transport intel all verticals are welcome all questions are welcome carriers brokers dealers auctions Please do say hello in the live chat. Please do that. Please say hello. Put your company. Uh, your What are you looking for? Are you looking for a partner that to help you move vehicles? Are you a dealer? Are you an auction? Say hello. Let us know. You can see it happening in there already. And if you're new to the channel, thank you so much. 
thank you for saying hello and tuning in. Sure do appreciate it. We have somebody new every Tuesday night, and I love that. So if you're new, uh, we have something for you. We have at the quarter hour, we have industry news. I think you're going to like it. Um, what we do is we cover uh, front of the store, back of the store, industry news, national news, social media news, what's being talked about, auto transport tech, car shipping trends, etc. Um, and we're focused on tracking and logistics tonight. So I've tried to tailor some of the news articles to that, to mention that. And then EV is obviously a big one. We, at the 40-minute mark, are then going to welcome Jason Wolf, CEO of Vilog Tracking Solutions, to the show. We're going to learn more about him and Vilog. He's got a presentation. He wants to give you information. And because this is the show, if you've got tracking questions, and I've seen a lot of panel discussions and events where tracking continuously is brought up and there are still a lot of questions, that's why Jason is here. And then uh, we're going to get a software demo of Vilog with CTO Gil Messerman. He's going to join us and he's going to show us what's under the hood. We're going to be able to continue to ask questions, but wait. Then, there's a live panel discussion somewhere in about uh, an hour and a quarter. And hopefully we, you know, we have about an hour of time. We've got Matt from Jack Cooper, Jason Black Widow, Joel Pope Chevrolet, Rocky, Trinity Rail, Hendrick, Cart Group, Jeff, Gold Star Resources, Robbie, LMR Companies, Many verticals represented, and this is a big show. There's a lot to talk about because tracking is a very important topic. And so hopefully we can properly cover that, and you can learn more about Vilog tracking solutions. I'm already, I'm already a few minutes behind getting to my uh, live chat, so let's do this. Uh, what I do want to say is please do help me. If you know somebody, there's got to be somebody you know that really tracking is on their mind and we hear all the time can i get can i get a better system send them a lifeline you click share <laughs> if you leave a like thank you click share click click copy grab that youtube link text it email it share it on social media send it to somebody this is the show please join us you've got time this is going to be great and also uh go to autotransportintel.com click on sign up Come an ATI Insider, talk to Ty, get on the round table, get the email, let us know how we can help you. Ooh, Ty. I'll tell you what, Ty, hang on to that thought, buddy, because we're going to be right back after this. If you own a small or medium-sized vehicle hauling business, you need to join the National Vehicle Transporters Alliance. NVTA was created by car haulers for car haulers. As a member of NVTA, you will have access to saving up to 25% on complete business insurance, access to 24-7 roadside assistance, discounts on fuel, tires, parts, repairs, and so much more. NVTA is here to help keep you moving for the long haul. Visit GoNTVA.org to learn more and become a member today. National Vehicle Transporters Alliance, created by car haulers for car haulers, savings and discounts, solutions for small to mid-sized carriers. To learn more, visit GoNVTA.org. Uh, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Ty. <laughs> thank you so much, Ty, for ringing the cowbell. You know how to do it. That's right. Diamond Hands to the Moon, ATI. Um, thank you so much. You know, uh, lots of great things are happening, and it's really exciting. Ty, I love having you aboard. Cars on the Move on Fridays is awesome. You made industry news again, buddy. So let's go to the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's go, I'm going to back up the live chat. I just, I had to. I had to ring the cowbell. I really do appreciate that. John, Finest Towing Recovery was in here first. What's going on, John? Hope all is well. Thank you for tuning in. Hope all is well in Florida. Mark, Superflow Systems. Mark Grodeke is here. It's right. It's 198. It's in the books. Well, it'll be in the books soon. Or do we start? We've started the book. 
We've started the chapter of 198, episode 198 in a row on a Tuesday night. Jason Wolf is here. Jason Wolf, CEO, Vilog Tracking Solutions. Thank you so much, Jason. I uh, really do appreciate it. Really looking forward to this show. Kimberly is here. Kimberly is in the live chat. Welcome to Tuesday Night's Live with me. I'm your host. Thank you so much. Oh, we've got another Chris Chamberlain. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for ringing the cowbell. Um, Chris is part of the ATI core, right? We are a growing network and community. I uh, had another great meeting today with somebody that, you know, I met someone at a trade show. They told someone else, hey, let's set up a meeting. We got a chance to talk. It's probably going to lead to a future show, which is great. And that's how it's done. Are you interested? You want to talk? Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Chris has been on the car shipping roundtables. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. I'm backing it up again. Okay, so, yes, Ty. Ty is in here. Well, yes, he's in here. He's ringing the cowbell, Jay. Sheesh. Uh, Super Dispatch is here. What's going on? Saying hello to everybody. Visibility and eyeballs happening. John Cochran, LAI Auto Transport out of D.C. What's going on, John? Good to see you in here. Always see you. Thank you so much. Part of the core. Uh, what else? Fast Eddie Transport. What is shaking? Tracking is shaking. Um, let's see. Technically glitch not signed. <laughs> It's all right. It's all good. Visibility. Word of the night. I like that word of the night. That's good. Keep that going. Matt Landstra is here. What's going on? I'm Matt, we're excited to have you in the panel. Thank you so much for taking time tonight. Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics in the house. What's going on? Drawer Polinor. What's going on? Thanks for saying hello. Long time listener. First time caller. Okay, good. Looks good. Sounds good. Yeah, mic check one, two. But that changes over time. I don't know why. But I think we're okay. We're still okay. Mic check one two. Mic check. Okay, right. Jay, you're live. You can't you can't be doing that check stuff. Yeah, well we're doing it. And in fact, thank you, Super Dispatch, for ringing the cowbell tonight. Uh, Super Dispatch, thanks ATI for keeping this industry and community visible. Thank you so much. Um, you know, and that's the thing is that right? You know how this works. Once you start something, can you what can you make it relevant every week? It's not easy. Um, but then again, there's so much to talk about. Uh, what did we do last week? Vendor flow, that was communication. That had nothing to do with tracking. I mean, in a way, I guess. Um, a Black Widow with images, that's not exactly tracking, but yeah, it's related. So there's so much to cover. Thank you, Super Dispatch, for that. I really do appreciate it. Let's see here. Vistaga's here looking for a microwave to cook my popcorn. Great. That's a great idea. Uh, oh, Candy is here from Seaport Service, Jacksport in Florida. What's going on, Islands? Um, what else we got in here? Um, bring, oh, John's ringing the kid. Thank you, John. <laughs> Keeping the car transport news flowing. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, you know, and that's one of the things, uh, boy, the news has changed a lot. I really actually most like, like COVID, I, I skipped most of it cause we already, everybody kind of knows that, but if it's relevant, like it's really affected tracking and the chip shortage, chip shortage, right? Who saw that coming? Somebody must've, uh, and then EVs. Now it's all about, you know, no more gas vehicles by like 2040 definitely not by 2040 maybe in your garage i don't know can you drive it in the desert anyways there's so much interesting stuff going on all right it's 8 15 i gotta get to industry news i'll tell you what thank you all so much for ringing the cowbell and saying hello and posting information i love it i really do appreciate it so stick around after this we're going to industry news you won't want to miss it you know the value of a hard day's work because you're out there living it. Long hours, hard days, and a dollar that doesn't stretch as far as you'd like. But what if you had more time at home? What if you had more money at the end of the month? Where is it that your mind wanders on long, open roads? What is it that nags you at night? How could your life be better? 
More money, more freedom, less stress. What if I told you I could help you spend less time on the road while making more money? What if I told you that you could plan your next trip in under two minutes? Both of these things are true with Dispatch Center. Turn the corner with us. Start your next chapter today. Save valuable time finding the right loads. That's Dispatch Center with Superflow Systems. Get signed up and logged in and make your load management life easier. Visit DispatchCenter.com. And if you have any questions, Mark Rodeke, he's right there. He's in the live chat. It's NN Auto Transport Software Solutions. Thank you so much for that. Really do appreciate it. Let's do some industry news. It's time. So this is, yes, this is, it's show 198 in a row on a Tuesday night. Look at that. As if making awesome software wasn't enough, Mark is ringing the cowbell once again. Thank you so much. Check Dispatch Center out. We love ATI. Thank you so much, Mark. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. It's great to have you in here. And, um, and in fact, I think we've got, uh, somewhere around the corner, we've got some more information because it, the, the work is never done, actually. Um, where's the, uh, the car shipping transport auto quota? Oh, where's Larry? Larry's coming up. It's 198 in a row. It's cloud-based tracking with Vilog. Now, Vilog, uh, we're going to see some of this. Some of this will look familiar soon. But I'm sharing a couple... I'm just going to tease a couple things, Jason. Okay? Just quick teasers here. Vehicle logistics goes virtual with Vilog. Simple asset tracking on the planet. Going to learn more. Analytics. Yard management. I mean, think about it. You got a thousand points of light. Can you track a thousand points of light? Where are the cars? This is the show. It's Vilog, Vehicle Tracking Logistics. You know the auto transport industry ecosystem. I talk about OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations, and loads. That one's for the podcast. Well, on a show like this where we're really, you know, yes, it's a service for OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, brokers, carriers, focused on loads. Love the teasers? Thank you. Sweating it there. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I was just winging it. Totally winging it. Yeah, we can tell, Jay. Uh, auto transport intel. We talk about the front of the store, the back of the store, back of the store. That's the transport parking lot. Front of the store where the dealer sells the cars and around and around it goes. The more you know, the faster it moves. It's the year of the hybrid. Digital meets physical. So much digital auction news today. Wow. Did you see the stuff? We're going to go into a couple things. Because when the auction is a packed house, you'll find Ty in the clubhouse. It's Ty Transport Guy. Visit him. Find him in the clubhouse at Ty Transport Guy. Got a transport question? He's connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. What if I told you I can solve your logistics nightmare by adding more logistics can't do more if he has his voice. But that's what we're talking about. Let's talk about some logistics. Sam's Club unveils pilot where shoppers can scan purchases and have items shipped from home. Shipped to home. Maybe they return it from home, too. Say, yeah, I know. I know. It's not vehicle transport. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. Uh, South Korea's container squeeze throws exporters into costly gridlock. Unable to get a slot on a container vessel, Lee Sang-hoon is considering using fishing trawlers docked for repair in the South Korean port of Busan to meet surging export orders for the car engine oil he sells to Russia. China is the black hole in this shipping crisis. All the carriers are headed there. But wait. Logistics? Uh, Mira Joshi, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration Deputy Administrator, visited the port of New York and New Jersey Wednesday to discuss... Ongoing supply chain disruptions after the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you say tracking logistics nightmare? 
Topics discussed include delays related to the return of empty containers, road congestion, and a record increase in cargo volume. Oh, that's fun to deal with and track. $17 billion investment. And the Biden administration launched the Supply Chain Disruptions Task Force. Hmm. I wonder if there's any tracking going to be talked about. First shift, Stellantis idling Ram 1500 output due to chip crisis. Crisis. I wonder if that'll affect tracking. First shift, GM drops some wireless phone charging due to chip crisis. Audi CEO says the chip crisis will persist. Think that'll affect tracking? I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing a real theme here. Tesla finally begins shipping full self-driving beta version 9 after a long delay. The definitely not autonomous, but certainly advanced driver assist system. Tracking. Oh, speaking of tracking, yeah, I love the Tesla forum. This, <laughs> and if there was a poster child for the need for better tracking, it's the Tesla forum. Uh, this guy said, how do you get them to tell you the details? Every time I ask, it's just the end of August. Can't tell me anything else. Ordered my M3 LR on the 19th of June. So I hope my car is on that boat. This guy says, just ask nicely, I guess. Wow, that's tracking? Really? Um, CIMC raffles to construct dual fuel carriers for Wallenius. Chinese shipbuilder CIMC Raffles has received an engineering contract for up to six low-emission LNG-powered car carriers. Tracking. That's why, you might have seen this, I talk about auto transport business strategy every week. Four shows a week? Tracking. Oh, and I, I do, you know what? I, I, I'm like, well, I'll share it. I got 850,000 views. Tracking. Uh, starting July 21st, you can spend less time searching, more time moving vehicles with the new search. Huh. I wonder if there's any tracking. You know, we talk about the new search on uh, Dispatching Live on Thursdays. Track with us. This is how you get your car shipping news. <laughs> Tracking. Uh, throw it up on the big screen. And you know what? Hey, did you know what time it is? Are you guys ready? Um, I'll tell you what. I will. Uh, let's do this. What you do, if you don't know, and if you haven't been here, if this is your first time here, I invite you to play Ask Larry. 850. I know it's pretty cool. That's why I share. I'm like, that's a lot of views, actually. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so what we do is... No, that's not it. What we do is go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. And we play Are You a Car Shipping Guru? It's five questions. And what you want to do again is dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. And you can submit your answers. So you have five questions. We're going to go through the questions. I do the answers on Thursdays on Dispatching Live. Here we go. In 1911, Chevrolet debuted their first vehicle. What was it? Series C Classic 6, Chevelle, Impala, or Series B1? All right. So, the, and I don't know the answer. I don't. I don't look at the answers ahead of time. I have no idea. So, does anybody have a guess? I'd love a guess in the live chat. By the way, if you're on the uh, for Jason, you're in about 15, 20 minutes. Gil, oh, you're going to be joining, that's right, same time, 15, 20 minutes. And then the panel will start in about 45 minutes-ish. But go ahead and join. If you've got the link to the Zoom meeting, go ahead and join in. And I don't even have the answers here tonight. So next question. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount? to ship a 2019 Ford Explorer from Yellow Pine, Idaho 
to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Is it 1475, 1690, 1785, or 1975? So I had a question today. Actually, somebody asked me, can you help me get a car shipping button integrated into our dealer website? And the answer is, oh yeah, for sure. Not me, but uh, Larry, the Quotify Llama, TransportAutoQuoter.com. Oh yeah, he knows what he's talking about. You know how he knows? Alexa, open Quotify. Give it a shot. <laughs> Use Quotify. Here we go. Question three. According to KBB, what was the average price of a new light vehicle in January 2021? 28,790, 32, 36, 40 grand. Average price of a new light vehicle in January 2021. Interesting. Interesting. You have to be following the market. There have been crazy news stories like, uh, I just read a news story. I think it was Automotive News. A dealer asked another dealer. He was so low on new car inventory. He asked another dealer, we'll pay you $3,000 over sticker price just for one of your trucks. And the, and the dealer is like, I can't do it. What the heck? Wow. Here we go. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount? To ship a 2020 Hyundai Tucson from Boulder, Colorado to Tacoma, Washington. 880, 1040, 1195, 1325. Mic check, one, two, three. <laughs> I love these questions. Thank you so much. That's right, Superflow Systems. It's Transport Auto Quarter. And Larry's not messing around. These are numbers in today's market, given what's going on today. Check back in six months, you're going to have different prices because it's different times, different seasons, different factors, different chip shortages. Here we go. One more. Are you ready? What does CDL stand for? Commercial driver's license. Content drive load. Central dispatching loads. Or cars driving less. We're all really, these are really good. Really good. Really do appreciate it. Love this stuff. Just ring in the register. Thank you so much, Larry, for these questions, for this respite, as if we haven't been having enough fun. It's all, but we're already 30 minutes into the show. Can you believe that? Somebody's like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I can't. Well, I'll tell you what, we sure do appreciate it. Go ahead, please do us a favor. Let somebody know. Go to autotransportintel.com. Click on sign up. Become an ATI insider. Talk to Ty. Learn more about how to grow your car shipping business. Again, if you're a carrier, a broker, a dealer, a dispatcher, you got questions about route, running lanes, equipment, etc. Ty wants to talk and he wants to help. He's also in the live chat. You could maybe just contact him right now. Save all, the, all kinds of time. That's right, it's now halftime. It's 8.30, man, we're right on time. Thank you so much. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to raise a glass to my ELD punch. I'm going to take a rest for a minute, and then we're going to be right back with the second half of Industry News. And after that, we're going to be with Jason and Gil. Stick around. Is your current vehicle imaging process producing inconsistent images? Frustrating? Time-consuming? At the mercy of another vendor's schedule? Well, it doesn't have to be. Black Widow Imaging provides a simple system to capture high quality images of your vehicles in seconds. Simply align the driver's side tire with the floor strike. Stop on the floor plate to scan your vehicle code and capture the exterior images. It's that easy. It's also equipped with an interactive 360 degree interior camera option so your customers don't miss any details. The results are fast, consistent 4K images that are delivered to your website in minutes. Let us show you how easy your imaging process can be anywhere in the global supply chain. Visit blackwidowimaging.com to schedule a live demo. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads? when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. 
We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. Black Widow Imaging provides high-resolution solutions for OEMs, carriers, auctions, dealers, rail, row, row, and fleet. Schedule a live demo. Go to blackwidowimaging.com and find out what it's all about. I also want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. Sue runs a dispatch office. She's also a fully licensed broker. She's my co-host on Thursdays. Are you moving a car? Contact murphyautotransportservices.com. Moving into the second half of the news, I do want to say that is Thursdays. That's where we do load board search advice. That's where you can see me and Sue in action. And also, hey, this is pretty cool. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., we have a YouTube video premiere with Black Widow Imaging. Um, now, I will I'll go ahead and I'll tell you a secret. Um... You may recognize portions of this video, but it is a video edit. It is nice and concise. Black Widow Imaging, the movie, some have said. So that's going to be great because if you haven't gotten a demo yet, you need to find out why. Uh, this affects, it's, it's like tracking. It affects so many things because if you can't see it, are you going to buy it? Are you going to buy that car sight unseen? Nothing. Nothing? Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's go into part two of the news. GM turns supplier to build initial EV vans while it readies the plant in Canada. Huh, that's interesting. Wait a minute, they're, they're going to get help on the manufacturing? General Motors is turning to German parts supplier to make the initial small production run of its new EV van to move to get the vehicle quickly in the hands of its customer FedEx. The decision to use KUKA AG to build the EV600 vans is not typical in this industry, but it shows the number one U.S. automaker's desire to stick to a plan to roll out the vehicle in late 2021. What if that'll affect tracking? Stellantis to invest more than $35.5 billion in an electrified vehicle lineup. Dang, it. number just keeps growing. It's like, uh, it's like Bezos and Branson. <laughs> right. Uh, Stellantis World's number four automaker said on Thursday it plans to invest more than 30 billion euros through 2025. That's a lot of billions. Stellantis invests in Ellesmere Port for Electric Future. This comes out of Automotive Logistics investing 137 million for the exclusive production of electric vehicles. The move will contribute to the establishment of a net zero carbon automotive industry in the UK by 2030, by which time production of pure petrol and diesel engine vehicles is legislated to end 2030. Production will begin by the end of 2022 for domestic and export. Brussels will ban diesel cars by 2030 and gas cars by 2035. That's it. So like 2040, you know, nobody, nobody's talking about 2040 anymore. God. Uh, cars.com boosts its website. The new site promises load times up to 87% faster. Yikes. Real-time inventory updates of over 50,000 cars added. An especially important feature in today's car inventory starved environment. Company says the upgrade built on cloud-based technology now delivers a more streamlined and dynamic experience for both car shoppers and sellers. So this happened today. Do you see this? Tim is wearing his ACV hat. I got one of those. So this happened today, and I could not be more excited about the future. ACV Auctions acquires Max Digital. Wow. I said, holy cow. You know, uh, Tim and his melting block of ice. Tim, Max Digital... Paul, Black Book, Me and Ty, Cars on the Move on Fridays, the last Friday of every month. 
Should be an interesting Friday coming up. Well, that's crazy news. In fact, here's some more. Accelerate buys liquid motors. Uh, another, uh, it's a auction, right? Uh, Accelerate Group has purchased liquid motors, the auction group said. It's a move that can help bulk up Accelerate's digital sales, uh, with which the company says have seen significant growth in the last five years. Yeah, no kidding. Man, it's a biathon. DP World buys logistics specialist Syncreon. Container terminal giant DP World bought third-party logistics Syncreon. $1.2 billion. Holy mackerel. Auto transport Intel four times a week. Tuesday Night's Live, where we talk about what's being bought. Tracking, photos, business, DOT compliance on Wednesdays for safety, dispatching live on Thursdays with loads, and on cars in the movie, round of the week, connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. Let's do that again. Let's see it again. Let's get a recap of that. Noon every Wednesday, DOT compliance. We talk about things like how we doing, proper load distribution of a trailer, because this got to be, we got to fix this. We cannot have any more flips of the week. And Brian is your friend. He wants to help you. He's here. He's answering questions. Your DOT guy, Brian, is our DOT expert brother. Thank you, Brian, and his company, Fleet Compliance Solutions. And if you miss it, catch the podcast. Go ahead and do that. Um, then on Thursdays, Dispatching Live, Load Board Search Advice, Thursdays at noon, with me and Sue, we got the muggle problems. We got cash and darts and dice. Uh, and if you missed that, check out the podcast. Oh, we were selling Fritz's auto transport trailer last Thursday. That was cool. There's the trailer. You want? Are you looking for a trailer? It was on Dispatching Live. Are you selling a trailer? Let's do this thing. Then on Fridays, cars on the move, dealers, auctions, and carriers. Fridays at noon. We had a great show last Friday, Cars Recon, auto, auto reconditioning, auto remarketing, detail, paint, body, etc. Solving problems for the auction. Cars Recon was on Cars on the Move with Damian Clayton and Becky Anderson. Great show if you missed it. You want to check that out. Thank you guys so much. And if you missed that, guess what? Podcast. Uh, this was last Tuesday night, Faster Dispatch, through text, with Vendor Flow. That was a great show. That was a big show. Communication is everything, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, next Tuesday, I'm not going to be... I'm finally going to be out of the office. I'm going to be in Durango, Colorado next week. So I'm going to I'm gonna just try to... You know, did you see this? Sh there was a show a few years ago where I went live from a winery for like 15 minutes. That was kind of crazy. And I've done other remote shows. Well, I'm going to be in Durango, Colorado, so let's see what happens. Five, ten minutes, crickets. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. That'll be interesting. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. Thank you so much for joining me on a Tuesday night. It is now time. What we're going to do is we're going to go into... Um, we're going to go into the interview background and into the live software demo with Jason Wolf, CEO, and Gil Messerman, CTO of Vilog Tracking Solutions. So go ahead and make sure that popcorn's ready. Is it ready? Uh, well, I've missed some several live chats, but yes, we got. Oh man, Jeff's in here. Jeff's gonna be on the live panel. Um, yeah, Max Digital is sold. I have a suggestion that would help make me as an owner operator more likely to sign up for tracking software. Love that. Love that. That's right. That's what it's all about. OEMs, auctions, dealers, carriers, brokers, owner operators. If you're a dispatcher and you got a tracking solution question idea, we want to hear it. This is the show. This is the tracking show. It's 198. Stick around because we're going to be right back after this. You must be exhausted worrying about delivering on the daily schedule, making sure everyone knows where to find the cars they need, knowing exactly where and when the cars need to go, and ensuring customers will get them on time. Vlog uses the most advanced technologies to ease your worries. 
It shows you where each and every car is and tracks their entire delivery process from start to finish. VLOG can also help optimize your logistics and processes. It can even notify you in real time of any vehicle exceptions. And the best part is, you can start immediately with no setup required. Vlog is a ready-to-use service available on the web and mobile phone. You can get started today at vlog.io. So what are you having trouble tracking? Remember we mentioned auction, dealer, OEM, fleet, row, row, rail, Tracking is everywhere. We looked at it in the news. We have so much to talk about. But before we get to the panel, what we're going to do is we're going to meet the CEO, Jason Wolf, and CTO, Gil Messerman. I'm going to welcome them in now. Gentlemen, welcome to Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Nights Live. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I'm gonna, Jason, I'm going to start with you. Jason, can you see me and hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me, Jay? I can hear you. I can see you. Thank I'll, you I'll, so much. I'll take a page out of your book and do mic check, check, check. Right? <laughs> it's good. All right, yeah. Get, since we're doing it, yeah, give me another one. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Okay. You look good. You sound good. Let's go to Gil, and then we're going to find out more about you and Vilog. Gil, thank you for taking the time. Can you see us and hear us okay? Yes, I can. Thanks for having us today. Perfect. Awesome. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do one more mic check. One, two, three. And Gil, your audio was great. So I think we're good. And in the live, in the live chat, go ahead and take notes. Okay, you got your pen? I always say this to everybody that's going to be on the show. Get your pen, get your paper, and get ready because there's a lot of information coming. Jason, let's start with you. Jason, please tell us a little bit more about you and Vilog. Great. Thanks, Jay. Thanks so much. It's an honor and pleasure to be here with you and, of course, everybody on the chat and uh, live. Um, a little bit about me. I, uh, you don't have to guess. My accent is kind of weird. I'm South African born, spent half my life in Israel and half my life in the US. So I'm kind of a mongrel of the world. Um, 30 years in tech, uh, various tech companies, always trying to solve the biggest problems I can find around. And who would have known that you know, automotive logistics will be headline news. And uh, it's just amazing to see with the chip shortage and everything that's going on. So yeah, my background is is in tech. My, uh, my life has been split between various countries and cultures. And I just love what you guys are doing here. Should I talk a little bit more about uh, v Vlog and uh, what's going on? Or? Well, I, I will say this, I, I didn't know the so south african and israel that's really interesting so i appreciate that thank you for sharing that yeah because um, otherwise i usually talk and people start to focus on where's this funny accent coming from well, no, exactly right. we, anyway. well we're human and that's where the relationship side comes in but yes please tell us more about vilog please do that so uh, first of all you know we're looking at, as I mentioned, um, where we stand right now and having automotive logistics in the front line use is, is a first time, I think, for this industry. Um, and it's pretty clear because it's a poster child for the post-corona, the post-COVID type economy where we suddenly get this huge surge in, in demand, um, supply can't catch up. And we realize what's what's really important. You know, the world over the last 20 years has managed to radically change how we buy things. We're buying things online. We're configuring them. We're getting them very quickly. And everything seems great from the consumer perspective or the end user. And then manufacturing has grown leaps and bounds. Technology has brought on Industry 4.0. We're uh, building these smart robots, all the digital data is telling us what that customer wanted from the website. 
and creating the manufacturing bill of materials, MRP, ERP, everything's happening well. But what happens between the manufacturer's floor and that end customer's door has remained in the 20th century. We're manually looking for things. We're, you know, even someone told me a story, one of our customers, that they leave the trunk of the car open in a lot with hundreds and hundreds of cars because they need to find a specific car. And when it starts to rain, they run around and they close all the trunks of the cars. So there's so much old manual error prone processes between manufacturer's floor and the customer's door. And that's exactly where VLOG comes in. VLOG stands for virtual logistics, basically taking the real world between that manufacturer's door and the customer's door and creating a digital twin, a representation of everything that goes on, the assets, the vehicles, where they are, what status they're in, the people that are handling them. So doing all that, taking that, putting it up in the cloud, where most our compute power and our smartness exists today and being able to actually show us in real time, as well as in the history, as well as what we're planning to do. And we'll see that today from Gil of how we actually handle a batch of vehicles and we watch it in, 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 on the screen and we can follow as the real live vehicles move from place to place. So I'm really excited to show you this virtual logistics platform that allows us to see in real time everything across the supply chain. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to I'm going to click share screen so you can go ahead and do that. But you got my attention. You really got my attention with the trunks of the cars because I know you're right. I know that that's how we're doing things. And when I see even in a in events where logistics managers are 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 they I didn't hear the trunk of the car example before but I know that they're they're doing manual workarounds and it seems kind of crazy. Yep, definitely crazy. Um you know, there's endless examples of those those things with the people with the clipboards that start the day with a list of vehicles. They have to walk around the parking lots and by the end of the day they might have done only 5 6 vehicles. Um, the truck drivers that come in and if they leave with eight cars instead of nine, the entire load is, is not worth the, the, the price that they get in for it. Um, can you see my screen? I can. Looks great. Thank you. Okay, great. So what I'll do is I'll tell you a little bit about this going from vehicle logistics to creating this virtual logistics with Vilog. So... If, if you think about some of the challenges we have in today's industry, you know, and, and this picture is indicative of any of our customers or, or, or what we see in the world, where we've got, as I said, once the vehicle leaves the manufacturer's floor, they've got multiple steps, yards, trains, trucks. We've got guests on this panel that, that deal with a lot of these things. And the vehicles themselves even though the trend, you spoke about this trend, we've gone electric vehicle, we've gone autonomous, we've got so much smarts in vehicles today that between the manufacturing floor and the customer's door, they, these objects are kind of dumb. They sit out there, a lot of them share the same model, make, colors, and we find it very hard to know exactly which vehicle is in which status and where it needs to be. So that means low throughput. We're not getting as many of them through, which means less profitability for the part of the industry that doesn't have very high margins. We have high operational costs because things are done manually. At each step, someone has to either manually write down something or actually get into a system, an old system, to say the car is now being delivered to the front of the lot. It could be things that we just don't know what the current status is. We have customers that used to take two weeks to do an inventory of a lot like this. And today, instantly, the inventory can happen with a drag of a mouse across the lot, and it picks up all that information. 
of course, agility. Now we're talking about post-COVID, suddenly manufacturers are building tens of thousands of vehicles that are not reaching the customer's door, but have to wait for a chip to be installed. So these types of challenges are really, really slowing the entire chain down, reducing our profitability and making it very difficult for people to make a living. And the question that begs is, is there a solution that can give me that accurate real time, right at, at, at the moment, knowledge of where every vehicle is and, and, and what its status is? And let me have all that without any additional work, without any additional uh, high costs or things like that. Because in the past, we could have that. We could have gone with very expensive GPS trackers spend $100, $200 on putting in a device and then maintaining it, making sure it doesn't get stolen, bring in a whole team of IT consultants to implement a system that's going to track it. So you could technically do some of these things. It would be very costly. It would take a lot of time, but these challenges are main challenges that exist. And of course, if you've got any interjections or questions along the way, feel free to stop me. Uh, this is a great format. I, I'm really excited to have a format where you're not giving a 10 minute pitch and you're done. Here we can talk about some of these challenges and I'm looking forward to the panel because you've got such a great variety of people that see this, these challenges from different areas. So having said that, if we spoke about the challenges, let's speak about what Vilog does and how it solves these, these challenges. I said, you know, we, we, we don't want to use expensive hardware. We don't want to spend a lot of time on implementation, costs on expensive IT. So what Vilog does is it takes all the, 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 the existing knowledge. It might be you have uh, video feeds on site. So beautiful type of video with Black Widow and others. There's really great assets that exist out there, data that exists there. So we take existing data. We use employees' phones, for instance, to crowdsource, bring as much data as we can on the real-time situation to the cloud. In the cloud, we can do a lot of smart things because the cloud has a lot of power. It's always on. It's always there. And it allows us then to change very rapidly and give people pictures about what's going on. So we take the, the real world, which is gray and hard to find and navigate and trunks are open or not. And we layer a digital twin to that on top of it, where everything, you don't have to mark it with paint. There's a digital paint that tells you what type of car this is, where it's going. What it's done, is it delayed? All these questions can be answered very simply if you've got a perfect digital twin that is crowdsourced, that doesn't require all this very hardware and implementation specific, that's crowdsourced in the cloud and then provided to us. So in a nutshell, how does this thing work? We use existing hardware, you know, phones, Bluetooth beacons that are cheap, single dollars out, you can buy them anywhere, bring them in. We'll talk about how we onboard in one, two, three in a minute, but using that existing things and the employees that are already doing their job to bring that data to the cloud, and then it becomes a perfect real-time view of the entire the entire uh, supply chain. Now, because it works so well in automotive, and that's kind of where uh, uh, Vilog started, and the person who started it, and the brainchild is actually going to be showing us a demo, which I'm really excited for, because when Gil spoke to that first customer a few years ago, they said, God, I've got 10,000 vehicles and I've got a team of people that have to go manually and start searching for the vehicles that need to get to the customer tomorrow and go through PDI and testing, etc. And that process would not only cost a lot of time, 
it would lead to very unhappy customers because the customers didn't know when their vehicles, even today, when I take my car to the, to the shop, it's, I'll call a day later and say, when is it ready? They would say, we'll call you back in the afternoon after we talk to the mechanic. And that whole process, be it new vehicles or used vehicles, is a very labor intensive process with customers that are not happy because they don't know anything about where their vehicles are. So we, we saw this thing work in the automotive industry, and that's where we started. But we see this working in any industry that has bulky assets. And why bulky assets? Because if the assets are small, like packages, it's very simple. There's very standard RFID readers and tags and UPS and FedEx and all these guys. They can move those things very efficiently and easily. Once they get too big for a person to pick up and move quickly, suddenly the, the complexity grows up. And that's what we saw that we have customers in manufacturing that are building things and they stack in these huge components one on the other using forklifts. We have logistics providers, customers, we have construction companies. It allows us to use the same type of vehicle intelligence where you've got a big asset that needs help moving to be able to manage it efficiently. So what types of assets? I mentioned some of these, these assets before, of course, vehicles, but cable drums. We have one of the largest cable drums that makes both electrical and communication cables very similar problem. These things are huge. They're very expensive. They're not commodity standard the same. You know, the order for a telco in one country has a specification. It comes out of the manufacturing floors and they stack them in yards, either indoors or outdoors. And then it's a long process to track them and find them and know where they are until the customer delivered them. Um, Trailers, another one where it's a roll on, roll off, very similar to vehicles and a lot of other big, big asset uh, types that we have. Anything we want to um, highlight on, on the types of assets and, and what Vlog does before I jump in and continue the monologue? Keep going. I mean, you got me. I can't stop thinking about from the manufacturer's floor to the customer's door. You got it. That is great. That's right. Love it. Love it. So to kind of summar summarize the, 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 the key features that are required to build this kind of digital twin that allows virtual logistics, really important not to go and, 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 and buy and start putting a lot of IT infrastructure in. IT infrastructure by nature is going to be outdated. Technology moves quickly. So you need it to be in the cloud as much as possible. Leverage existing phones. They get upgraded by, by your employees or yourself anyway because you're using them for other things. So leverage is key. Bring as much data as you can from existing hardware. Follow the existing processes. We believe that your business, the, the people that are actually running the business, they know their processes best. So having a system that forces you to change your behavior is wrong. The way we build it is a very simple cloud-based platform. It can connect, and we'll talk about it, connect to any other systems that you have. So let's say you have a vehicle inventory system or a dispatch system. It can just connect there say, oh, I know which vehicles you have. Let me give you the last mile location of them in real time without any people inter intervening and putting in and being able to maybe make a mistake with the VIN number or anything like that. Let me read it automatically associate it with these other systems. So existing business processes really key. Now, because all it is is a mobile app, and everything else is collected in the, the cloud, you've got very simple training. The employee doesn't need to do anything. We'll see that in a slide in a few minutes, but they come, 
they scan the paperwork of the car as the vehicle comes out of the manufacturer's floor. They associate it with a tag, and that's it. From that point on, all the phones, all the things are picking up. They're knowing that car belongs to that specific VIN number, and that gets transmitted to the cloud. So when that car goes through the car wash, the cloud can make smart calculations like say, okay, I know that at 99.9%, .9 every car that goes to the car wash is going to be ready for pickup in five minutes. And I can send a note to the driver, the truck driver, or the end customer that it's going to be. So all this knowledge is collected automatically. No human has to put it in. And that makes it very easy, no extensive training. No site physical requirements. So a lot of customers that before that they used Vilog, they would go prepare a lot, paint the lines, give them markings, specific markings, put antenna, put all the infrastructure they need. So then when an employee comes and moves it, it's easy for them. Here, because you've got this layer, this virtual layer on top, you don't need any physical requirements. Um, you know, that case study we spoke about with Kia, they doubled their capacity in the last couple of years with Vilog. And when they got a new facility, they didn't even bother to do the markings on the, on the road. They would just park them and you would see the overlay of where every vehicle is. Now, one of the nicest examples of this is during Corona. We've had such dislocations where some businesses like shopping malls and sports stadiums were empty with huge empty lots. And then you had other businesses like OEMs and, and rental and leasing companies that were stuck with huge numbers of vehicles that they couldn't move. Now, we, we had customers who said, you know, I'm going to start pop up business in, 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 in a few minutes. I'm going to take a parking lot in a stadium that costs me nothing because no one's using it. And the stadium owner is just happy for me to, to, to pay them a few hundred dollars a day. And now I can park thousands of vehicles and I can do it the next day. I don't have to do any kind of prep work for the site. So really, really important how flexible the system can be. Rapid onboarding, as I said, you know, because the fact that you can start immediately the next day with 50 vehicles and you can scale to 10,000 like some of our customers do very quickly, there's no need to stop along the way. You can do this very quickly. And the beauty is because the system is both real time as well as you can see the history and you can plan ahead, it allows you to enable your workforce to be much smarter about their decisions and how they operate. I spoke about this a little bit, but let's dive in. People, some people, not everybody, and I apologize for those who don't, some people love how things work. And as I said, here it's super simple. The tagging of these vehicles is done, we don't need to build these dedicated tags, like some companies, they They'll sell you a system that you have to have de their tags and you have to, we're all about the software. So you can buy these tags from anywhere around the world. And even in today's crunch of chips, we can still order. There's been a, you know, maybe a week or two delay, but you can order these tags anywhere in the world, single digit dollars per tag, and they can last a year and a half battery and you can replace the battery. You can throw them out because they're so cheap. And these tags get associated with a phone, which everybody has, once you put the vehicle. Certain places, let's say at the yard's gate, you might want to put, you know, a couple hundred dollar router. Again, standard routers that act the same as like 10 phones would do. The phones, they already own them, or the ruggedized um, devices that you use today. All those things, they work. They're good. You don't have to replace them. But if you want, you can add a route at the gate that automatically will let you know that the truck's left with these seven VINs or eight VINs. It will let you know if something didn't leave. 
you can have all these smartness happening in the cloud because the router exists there. And then of course the cloud component, which is the most important, the cloud is future proof. The software gets updated all the time, gets smarter and smarter, customer feedback. One customer has an idea, it helps all the customers because we keep updating it. So you're not paying for something that's obsolete the next day, you are paying a subscription that gets better all the time. Kind of, I don't know if you watch Netflix, but it's kind of the content grows all the time. You're paying the same monthly fee. Make sense? Yes. Great. So we spoke about because Vlog as a automotive logistics intelligence platform sits in the cloud, it doesn't have to replace your existing systems. It can communicate with them very simply. So if it's a ERP system or if it's a vendor system, whatever system you have, it can work with them. It can also, some of our customers, especially today where you've got these new business models, you know, we've got customers that are reinventing fleet management as a service for other fleet managers. We've got customers that, that do, you know, leasing to, to gig economy drivers like Uber drivers and Lyft drivers. So you've got all these new business models. Of course, you've got new OEMs that are building electric vehicles in smaller plants, not in these huge manufacturing places. So you've got all these new business models. So Vlog says we need to build ourselves in that cloud. So you can either interface if you're a big major OEM or you're a small, nimble new person, you can use standalone and work day one, or you can integrate to your existing systems and work day one. It's your choice. We build the data for you. Quick example to kind of bring things home. Before, we would look at a lot of anonymous cars we would not know exactly. We would physically have to go and find things. We would get a list, sometimes as, as rudimentary as a printout of the vehicles that need to be managed, which of course is not real time. But even if you get it in a mobile or ruggedized device, you get a list that someone decided ahead of time that is the right list. If it changes, there's a whole change order process thing that happens. In a virtual logistics world, in Vlog's world, everything is happening in real time. You get a list, the list is on a map. It's dynamic, it can change if something changes, if a vehicle is stuck or is damaged and it shouldn't meet there, replace it with another vehicle. Don't leave with eight instead of nine vehicles and lose money. All these things can be done because you've got this virtual layer of where the vehicles are in real time. This part I love the best. You know, people say, okay, so what's the onboarding process? How do you, how do you go and, and input assets into the system and all these big heavy words? And as I said, it's a mobile app on, on the company's ruggedized device or your personal mobile phone. And it's as easy as scan the VIN number from the vehicle, scan the barcode. I think I have one of these guys over here even if you can see my camera scan the little beacon this is as small as it is like a little uh, a little miniature hockey puck for those of you in the uh, northern uh, parts of the uh, US and Canada um, and then once you've scanned both those things it's associated it never has to be decoupled until the vehicle gets to the end customer once you take out the, the, that little beacon, it knows now that now from now on, it's not tracked. It's not part of that inventory. And it can pass, the data can pass from one stakeholder in the supply chain to the other. So it's really, really simple and really powerful. I spoke about, you know, how I love technology. So to enable something this simple requires a lot of intelligence, a lot of brains. 
And we try to keep all that brains in the cloud. Sensor fusion, fancy word for taking lots of pieces of data, putting them together and coming out with insights. It's like that example I gave you of the cars now going through a car wash. Hence, I know that in five minutes it will be ready for pickup. But it's endless types of insights that you can have for that. Um, you know, you know where a certain employee is. And let's say if the person next to the vehicle that's been with the vehicle for 10 minutes is the brakes expert, you pretty much will know, not you, but the cloud will know, the smart in the cloud will know, ah, I know that if Jack, who does brakes, has been working on that for 10 minutes, I know exactly what the status of that car is. And I know that it probably is going to go through inspection, so it won't be ready for pickup. So those types of insights, taking them, putting them in the cloud, makes our throughput much better, reduces our overall cost, builds flexibility into our business, and makes us imagine new types of business processes, like for the first time, connecting directly with our suppliers to let them know if you're a truck driver coming to a lot to pick up vehicles, to know here's the vehicles, here's where they are. If something changes, like a friend, he'll text you. The friend, the platform will text you. That vehicle that was supposed to be on the truck, it's not there lo no longer. There's another vehicle you can pick up instead and you don't miss a beat. You're on to your daily chore. So vendors, suppliers can be notified. Customers, same examples. If I've put my car in the, in the shop or the customer now is the dealer who has to sell cars. And Jay, you gave a great example where now people are moving be cars between dealers and their prices are going up in that. As a dealer, if I know where, which location my top cars are being sold, what a great sales asset that is for me because you know, today it's, it's a hunches. You know, this sales guy's been around a lot. He knows that if you put it on the northwest corner, there's more foot traffic that's likely to sell. That's, that's great. But if you could know for sure that when I put that car there, it's going to sell twice as fast if I put it 50 yards to the left. Wow, what great insights. And all that are insights that can happen if you know in real time and over time where every asset is. So just to summarize this, that bringing that data allows us not only to manage better, to empower the employees to do their job better, it also allows us to connect with our suppliers, vendors, and our customers. So now this is a part that I know it's not public, so I'm going to give you the insight of how, how this magic works. I know this is uh, only Jay and a few people are seeing this, so I'll give you the, the inside scoop here. So how do we do this? We basically leverage, as I said, employees' mobile phones, ruggedized devices, sometimes put in a standard router on a forklift or on a transport vehicle. As much data as possible for the least cost with standard st stuff that's out there. We ask them to send location, but not just location, the accelerator sensor, the, the, the speed, the vibration, any sensor. It could be a, a, a security camera. Any sensor data that we can collect will make the cloud brain smarter and be able to bring more powerful insights. And the beauty is it doesn't have to know a specific vehicle. Once you've put that beacon, that cheap beacon in the car, and it says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm, I'm for this, I'm for this, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. All the other sensors are actually leveraging you're not, you're not paying more for GPS communication to satellites. It's, it's going through standard cellular coverage. You're already paying for that. We optimize the, the, actual, the actual packets, the actual information that goes, so it doesn't cost a lot. It doesn't eat your battery. 
it's it's nothing different than what people are doing on Facebook or any other communication they're doing. We do it in the background, and in that smart cloud, that's where the power and the magic happens. And then we send them exactly what they need to know for optimization, for exception handling of the vehicles or the assets. So now you know the inside. So let's talk about some key features that you have to remember when, you, when you're using this. So first and foremost, to know exactly where the vehicles are at any given time. The fact that it, it happens in the background and it's no manual work, besides that one, two, three, scan vehicle, scan barcode on the, on the, on the beacon, you're done, it's all happening in the background. It gives you the entire yard and the entire route, which we'll see with Gil gives us beautiful demo, live demo of how this works. It allows us to understand exactly what our inventory stat is in real time. We don't have to, we don't have to decide even ahead of time what lot we want to take inventory on. We can just rub a band with our mouse on the computer and it'll tell us and show us exactly which vehicles are there and, and move us through that very easily. We can get those alerts, which we'll see uh, in a second, dashboards with different information. You have access both on mobile phones, but also on laptops on the web. And it integrates with everything else that you have, if you have. If you don't, it works also standalone. So let's look at a couple of examples. We spoke about the web interface. It can work on the web. It could be a drone map like you see here or a satellite, which Gil will probably show us. It's very simple. It's like a point and click camera. There's no uh, sophisticated thing. And then it leads you, it actually guides you. I don't know if you've seen these Apple eye beacons where it takes you to find your car keys or something. Same type of thing, like consumers, Business should be as simple as what cons consumers use. A couple of examples of analytics dashboards that we see. One of our customers wanted to see how fast vehicles are moving around the lot because they had some safety issues. And they probably also care about how much gas is used and what's the, the, the ability to do damage. So on the left here, you could actually see a heat map, a color map of the various speeds from 20 miles an hour to 30 miles to 80 miles an hour. Like the purple one, you could see that's high speed because suddenly you see a purple streak where the highway is, where slower vehicles wouldn't show up in that one. Or it could show you the real-time inventory tracking, or it could show you employee activity. So if you know that the on the right-hand side there, if you know that most employees are hanging out in these two areas, you'll optimize where they sit and where they actually move vehicles from. So you can see those types of things in real time. Again, just to wrap up, so I'll give Gil some time to, uh, to go through his spiel. Low investment, really easy to, to operate. That's what you want. No implementation. Scales from, you can start with one, two, three assets not that you would probably want that, to millions of assets. And we'll see that in the live demo, how we can go from a global view, see every yard, every location, every route, to a specific, specific little tiny piece of a parking lot. You can use open parking or, or you could use closed parking. We have technology that supports both. And of course, it adapts to your operations. Um, I think we we will skip the case study because I think we are how are we on time because I got like two more slides. Um, we're we're <laughs> we're we're probably a few minutes later than expected, but I mean you've got my attention. Um, yeah, go ahead, skip this case study. I agree with that. But if you got a couple more you want to share, and then no, uh, no, no, oh. yeah. I'm dying to get to the demo because yeah, I've spoken for a long time. This is way longer than I've ever pitched Vlog for. So as I said, onboarding, 
is literally like you open a Google account. You open an account, you get those beacons, and you just start to work on your digital twin of your logistics. So that's it. That's my last slide, and I'll be happy, happy to uh, answer in the chat, or you've got my uh, email, um, and we'll, 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 I'm just dying to see this live with Gil. Great. Let's do this. Uh, Gil, go ahead, and uh, um, Jason, you can transfer screen share to Gil. And I just want to say this. Thank you so much, panel, for, uh, for your patience. We'll be with you shortly. Let's check out this software demo with Gil, and then we will go on to the panel. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so we will present uh, our dashboards with some, of course, generated data, no, no, not real customer data. Um, so uh, I'm showing currently kind of a global view, right? We have um, a representation of a customer that has, that has multiple sites across US, US. You can see the list of the sites here. You can basically drill in and see how many vehicles there are at any site. If we want to get some general idea of um, uh, what the vehicles are, what their status are, we, we can actually go and group them by, by different properties. So what we can see here, there's a certain set of, of Toyotas, Ford, here different type. We can also go and break it down by a different property. And this property is essentially based on the data that we either calculate based on the history of what we see in the process, or we can bring it from the business systems that you're already using. So this is kind of a global view, right? If you want to get a general presentation of what's going on across all sites, you can uh, drill into a specific site. And on site, you can both look on how what's going on there, right? You can drill down to each specific vehicle see the vehicle details you can open the cart of the vehicle you can see its history and again if you want to kind of understand right what what the vehicles are to which customers they go you, you basically can also get a visual representation of that um, if let's say you want to see a specific area let's see i want to know what which cars i have in this particular area Right, you basically get this information. You can see the list of the cars, filter it, and also, also export it to the file for later use. And the system allows you control to actually share this information externally in a secured way. So you say you can decide that the vehicles that are here or several vehicles that needs to be exposed to a carrier. So when carrier comes in, he will know exactly which vehicle, he knows which vehicle he needs to look for and he will be able to see and find it immediately. So um, let, let's for now, <clears throat> let's make kind of a um, journey, right? And see how we can also track a, pro a process. Let's say we have a batch, uh, we have an operations manager that uh, tracks a batch of vehicles. I'll um, jump here to, to, to some other sites. Uh, so let's, assume, let's say we have a batch of 10 vehicles that just got from assembly line uh, and this high priority that needs to be distributed to several dealerships and a couple of them to port for, uh, for an export. So when the operation manager looks for, for opens a search, he will see it on top of his search. Uh, he can see each vehicle detail. He can actually zoom into the specific site and see each one, the location of each particular vehicle. Uh, I'll switch for a second to satellite view so it will be better kind of contextual information to understand where each vehicle is. And then it's possible to actually see the distribution plan. Right, so uh, what we can see here is that uh, <clears throat> these two vehicles actually need to go uh, to the trailers area of the plant. The rest of the vehicles <coughs> uh, 
should go to rail loading area. And then as I zoom out, I can, I can see the whole global distribution plan for this particular batch. So I see that um, several vehicles needs to be, go here and be there in two days. There's a dealership here that some of them needs to be in one day. And then there are other two dealerships that uh, are going for another, for another logistics center. And I can also define here what kind of transports this vehicle will be using. So here it's a truck and we have rail, uh, rail link here. So I, I kind of fast forward ahead. Let's assume that there are a couple of days and um, we will see a view that this dealership received these two vehicles. This distribution center now received the four vehicles that it should have received, but there was some loading issue and the port actually got two vehicles where two, two vehicles still stuck in the factory loading area. Right, so we can actually see this link getting red color. So there is some problem. And if I continue further with the process, I can see, okay, now the vehicles are distributed to all the points, but retrospectively I can look into this link to understand what was the problem there, whether there was something with the vehicles that were not loaded, maybe there was no space on, on the rail, etc. In addition to that, we can um, later on to zoom in into specific sites. Go back there. Right, and we can actually see how the working process was getting there. So I can say, okay, I want to see the, the overall employee activities. So this, and I can go day by day and see where, uh, where most of the work happens how the cars were moving, and I can filter it down to a specific, uh, to a specific vehicle, to a specific uh, uh, scanning device, etc. So I think I'll I'll stop here. So we'll maybe to give some time to the panel. Jay, any any questions or anything you'd like me to more focus on? Pretty good stuff. I was thinking this is um. There, I'll go ahead. I will. Uh... I'll take the screen, and um, I think, because I was reading uh, in the live chat um, some interesting thoughts, and what if I'm a carrier and I just want to find one car? Yes, yeah, so it is possible in the search to look either for a batch of the cars or for a single car, specific car, either by... Um, by VIN number or any other parameter, right? Also, as a, as a logistics provider, or if it is a dealer that you, you have a yard with several cars, you can mark several cars and give that access to the kind of create a group of cars and give the, and hand it over to the carrier, right? So once carrier comes in and opens a mobile app, he sees what he can handle. You have a yard with several cars. Oh, there I did it. I, you know what I did? I broke the internet as I went <laughs> without any warning. I just started inviting everybody in. Um, I thought, you know, this would be a neat parlor trek without thinking about the audio. So I apologize, Gil. I kind of cut you off and I no. went back to camera one. But the answer is, <laughs> the answer is, yeah, you can yeah. find one vehicle if that's what you need to do. And I like how in the demonstration, because what's more likely is that you are in charge of a fleet or some level of global logistics and you've got a lot to manage. And that is where it seems like from the events that I've seen, things come off the rails and the problems begin. So going back to the panel, and thank you all for jumping in and taking the time. Thank you for your patience. Your contribution. What I'll do is I'm going to start with short intros. Uh, I got Jeff in here first on my screen. Jeff, please say hello. Let us know if you can see us here and hear us okay. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Grandstaff, president of Gold Star Resources mm -hmm. in uh, Central Ohio, and I'm glad to be on the panel tonight. 
the product. Thank you, Jeff. Next on my screen, I've got Matt Landstra from Jack Cooper. Can you see us and hear us? Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Matt Landstra, Vice President of Technology at Jack Cooper. I'm excited to share and uh, hear what everyone else has to say. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next on my screen, I've got Jason Hawk, CEO of Black Widow Imaging. Jason, can you see us and hear us? Yep, I got you loud and clear. Hello, everyone. All right. Thank you, Jason. Um, and then next, I've got Joel, GM, Pogue Chevrolet. Hello, everybody. I can hear everybody. So Great. Thank you, Joel. And then Rocky, Low Scene, Trinity Rail. Hi, everyone. VP of Sales at Trinity Rail, uh, Dallas headquartered. Good to see everyone tonight. Fantastic. Um, also, let's see, we might have um, Hendrick. Is, can, Hendrick, can you hear us? Okay, we might have Hendrick uh, dialing in. Um, Robbie wasn't able to make it tonight, so this is our panel. And um, like I said, Hendrick, Hendrick, can you can you uh, hear us? But also on laptops on the web. Working on a connection. Yeah, Hendrick is, is tuning in from Germany. So um, everybody, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. Let's just jump right in. It's 9.30. We've got 30 minutes plus, give or take, maybe more. Anybody have anything they want? And before I say that, um, muting a mic, I hear an audio in the background. If you're if you're not saying anything, mute your mic. We can troubleshoot and pinpoint um, where that squirrel is at in the XLR. Does anybody have anything they wanted to lead with? Can I put that uh, chip on my son? Have we done that on a kid that we can't just run around? <laughs> Kind of hard to track sometimes. Yeah, we're okay, but you have to take care of the surgical part. Okay, got it. I'll just stick it on. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Rocky, how's uh, Mr. Ramirez doing at uh, Trinity? Still around? Yeah, yeah. Still hanging in there. Yeah. How do you know Mr. Ramirez? Uh, we've done some. Uh, we've done some inspections of some tanks for you guys. Ah, so, very good. Uh, tell him I said hello. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, your uh, presentation brought back a lot of memories, Jason, of uh, hoods up with uh, repair crews and then dead batteries from the lights uh, being on, um, those kinds of things. And then just driving around the yard trying to find a lost vehicle by color and, and make and model and that kind of thing. So lots of memories there that uh, are going by the wayside for future generations, it looks like. But uh, you did mention that... Um, the, the battery life is, uh, what, a year and a half, something like that. Is there a warning when the battery is, is getting low, something that uh, takes that beacon out of service? Yeah, so we have customers that actually decide, uh, you know, they, they set after a year to get a, to get a replacement notification for all the ones that are there. Um, okay. So they don't usually want to run the whole year and a half. They put a certain threshold and get a notification that this batch has to be replaced. Nice, nice. And I was thinking you uh, really hit the productivity and accuracy uh, implications hard, but uh, on the heat map, the safety and training implications of, you know, employees, if they're driving too fast or taking a, a, a not direct route or getting into a high traffic area, I thought that was, uh, there's a lot of great there that that will help uh, the uh, employees as well as help the, the quality of the vehicles that's a brilliant point we, we we started more about the operational and the two big benefits that actually came from customers was one is the health and safety and the other one was environmental which we didn't realize has become such a big deal in today's world where people are tracking how many miles and how much gas they're burning so those are two benefits side benefits that come from just the awareness of the system. Right. So Jason, I, uh, Rocky Lossin here. I, I unfortunately did not get to watch the, the beginning of this. I'm, I'm still in the corporate office and YouTube is frowned upon in the corporate office. So I had trouble logging on. 
so I apologize about that, but I did get a chance to read through your presentation this evening and um, the one that you sent out via email. And I, I was curious, can you talk a little bit about um, if your system's agnostic and how it can line up with other systems? You know, on the rail side, I know that we're working a lot on uh, advanced telematics right now and what that would look like. And we're trying to build as agnostic of a system as we can in our industry so that we can incorporate different items like this. So can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, I think I think you're hitting the key elements, even if you didn't watch them. In, in future world, everything has to work with everything. So you can't build these proprietary trackers that work with proprietary software. We work with any type of hardware out there. Um, we, we just finished a, a, a pilot with a rail company now, and both passenger and, and uh, freight uh, uh, train they have on the engines they have they have trackers but nothing on the on the thousands of of carts and they they don't know simple things like when they disconnected or things that we would expect people would know so these standard either gps or things we work with all the standard and it's not just we we think the whole industry needs to work with both the software of other companies as well as these uh, these beacons and trackers because otherwise it becomes it works for a year it works for two years you spend millions and then you have to go in and replace so we don't believe in that and we think it has to be all about the software we can see you hendrick now hi i've actually been here all the time i have some technical issues here probably Thank you very much for having me. Very interesting. Glad you were able to tune in, Hendrik. Yes. Um, please do say hello briefly. Just uh, rounding out. And then we've got, look at that. We've got a uniform nine. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, really, really interesting. And uh, <clears throat> the thing is, of course, like everybody already has understood it's, it should be like a simple this is of course my main question also that uh, it's really looks very simple the, like you know in, in the real world there is a always like some kind of uh, things happening between the things and then this is of course uh, not my worry but uh, just interesting to understand and then to, to know that okay if really like uh, dispatches like uh, booking the cards and they are delivered finally to the customer i mean between those two points there is happening a lot and, and this is my like a question that uh, maybe maybe you can explain a little bit uh, i mean how you can like uh, hook up all these situations i mean not all of course but uh, but something what what can happen because all kinds of damages all kinds of maybe there's something lost or, or items in the car and, and so on i mean you are not like uh, cover up everything. I mean, what is the what is the main target? And then also, if cars like are are moving, then uh, how far you can go with your locations? This will be my question. So, so great question, Hendrik. And and I think we have to separate what can be done today with the current system, and what happens over time and gets added. And um, and I think I, let me split that today. Once you've taken a beacon and you've associated, anybody that's now downloaded this app, which is just a simple download like you do from uh, iTunes or uh, Google Play, you download this app. Then if it's, let's say it's just one company that wants to do yard logistics, they can track within the yard. Now, if the car goes out on one of your trucks, and it's out there and your driver is not with the app and didn't participate with the operator that has the yard, then of course the chain breaks. You won't be able to have that virtual map. But now let's say your truck drivers also have the app. Now both your customer and you, and then maybe the customer's customer also has the app, suddenly you get more and more coverage. It's kind of like Wi-Fi in the early days, you know, those of us who remember, it was spotty. You couldn't get coverage. Cell was like that. And once you started to get more and more coverage, suddenly everybody's benefiting from that, that effect. 
So one customer can benefit because they can see their lot, the employees are moving around, there's zero cost of communication because they're using existing phones. And then as the supply chain starts to adopt this, suddenly everybody has visibility. So to your question, day one, everybody that installs the app and has the beacons sees everything in its vicinity. Once the cars leave the lot, if the driver has it, now both the drivers and the people that, that sent it can see it. So it really depends on, on how far the systems have been deployed. And it's deploy, I mean, it's like a five second download and now it's up and running. So okay. with, with that increased visibility, is, is there an opportunity for a monitoring chain of custody? I'm thinking on the damage prevention front where you actually have an interchange of the car and the chain of custody and where it goes. So, so that's a beautiful question. Also, Hendrik, you also asked this. The, the, once you have a digital representation of that, that car and it's not in the system, in our system today, someone else can develop that. They could develop a blockchain or some kind of ledger of that vehicle and our system would talk to it, provide accurate location or let's say you know black widow's imaging system would sit on a vehicle and be able to identify where there's damage and also upload it to that same blockchain so vision wise not today all these systems will talk to each other the cost will be almost non-existent because let's say you have a black widow system to image the vehicle for your own sales purposes but that same digital file can tell you if there's damage and can upload it to that ledger of change of ownership and know who created that damage. So all these systems over time, when we look back, it'll be like we see today with, you know, with, uh, with Uber and those systems, they, they grew up and suddenly they cover everywhere and all the time. I think this is going to be very similar where Vlog is a digital data representation of location and status, and people will be able to add in our system or in other systems, they'll be able to correlate information like ownership or damage or other attributes of the asset. The asset is just gonna get smarter and smarter in this virtual world, because it's mimicking the real world. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, I, I'd be interested to, to know if you have any insight if you think there's going to be a consolidation into some centralized location for all of this information is it is it vlog or is it vlog and partners um creating it's a great question i think there's another another great startup there that uh, that's you know vlog sees itself very very focused because uh, you have to be sexy but i think there is there is a ledger of ledgers in automotive that has to happen um, you know, we're working with some of the major OEMs, I can't talk about them, in partnerships, it's going to have to be some kind of consortium, but ultimately you're right, That's it, it has to exist, who owns it, how it's done, the reason it, has, it doesn't exist because it's so obvious is because it's so complex and there's so many stakeholders that have to say yes, so I think it's probably going to start as satellites and then the consortium is going to have to say, okay, well, I've got the standards, I know how this stuff happens in the cloud. Now let's sit down together and just see that the glue works. Yeah. And Rocky, that's kind of how, you know, from Jack Cooper's perspective, we're looking at it kind of in that mindset is that we're using, um, we're piloting with Vilog right now, but using that and other services to bring kind of a full visibility of the supply chain. We've got the delivery to dealers with EPOD and damages at that level but we didn't have anything from the manufacturer to the yard onto the truck or onto the rail car um, at that point to track kind of, hey, what happened within the actual yard itself point to point. Um, so, you know, you talk about change of ownership, transfer of, you know, we deal with a bunch of upfitters within our yard management. So we're moving vehicles three, four times potentially within our ecosystem around, you know, it could be geo geographically close. It could be 50 miles, 60 miles outside of a yard. Uh, but we're, you know, 
Vilog is a data point or multiple data points that help feed that larger picture. Um, and then, you know, Jason to talk about, you know, the experience of the driver and the experience of customers, this feeds into all of that is that we're trying to use tools like this um, and other types of tools to really enhance our customer experience from a visibility standpoint so they have that granularity down to a VIN level. Uh, but then I think even more importantly for our drivers or even partners that come in to help us, you know, move freight from some of our yards is that when our drivers come into yards that are tracked at this level, they get, they're in and out quickly. Or when brokers come into unfamiliar yards, they no longer have to know where B1 is located in the left-hand corner of this yard and go find it. They pull it up and they walk right to it. Um, and so, you know, we're using, you know, different technologies like that, but bringing it all together to enhance an experience, either internal for drivers, operational productivity st standpoint, or externally for our customers um, to enhance their experience because they expect you to deliver cars. What are you doing above and beyond that that helps them feel good about it and, you know, understand that we're doing it correctly? That's a question I had, Matt, with um, the, the uh, beacon. What about the, the non, uh, the vehicles outside of the norm, the, the carriers, but the maybe repair trucks, uh, uh, maybe, a, a, you know, who do you just give them, a, a, they get the app and then they have visibility of where to go and that kind of thing? That's, I mean, we haven't ex exposed it to external parties at this point, but that would be the idea. Okay. Um, right now we're piloting internal um, with our driver base and our um, operation base, um, but that would be the idea um, with brokers that come into yards that we manage. Uh, give them that visibility through um, either Vilog or some other app that is fed by Vilog, um, potentially. Gotcha. Central hub, so to speak. Yeah. And that's the benefit, Jeff, um, because the driver gets a benefit. It's not you asking him to do something for you. He's right. getting the benefit by speeding up the process and making it more accurate for him to pick up the vehicles. They don't mind. It takes a minute and it doesn't, and it only works geofence. So once he's gone home, it doesn't track, it doesn't do anything. It just works where it's supposed to. When needed. Okay. Very good. Plans to have like a mostly themselves already created some systems or they use some like uh, systems. A little quiet, um, Hendrik. Okay. Your audio changed, but I know like that off duty point. I mean, I was seeing that in the live chat, um, which is it right? That is, yes. It's better now. Much better. Yes. Thank you, Hendrik. Okay. So, I mean, the question once again is that the, the OMs today, they have like uh, all themselves already some kind of systems developed or, or they have integrated some other systems. How are we going to transmit all the data? I mean, if, if you are, let's say, some drivers and then fleets to like purchase your system and, and it's really easy and simple, but uh, how to communicate with the other ones? That's a great, great question. We get that a lot. A lot of people say, well, you know, cars are smart. They've got telematics. They've got all this very sophisticated stuff. But what usually happens is all that stuff that you need to either have the vehicle active for or you have to connect to an OBDD, people know, you know, people in our industry, they know that how manufacturers don't like you to mess with that. It's not on all the time. For logistics purposes, you need this very simple system and it, it just needs to work all the time wherever you are. Once the car is in operations with the end customer, then they can operate it through the telematics of the vehicle and all that stuff. There, we don't see a need right now to, to switch on a vehicle to find its location. It doesn't make sense financially, operationally. So it's a great question because a lot of people say, why do you need a parallel system? It's because most of these, these times, these vehicles are not on, they're being transported as, as dormant objects and you need to be able to track them very well. And the cost of tracking them that way is much, much higher 
and it's 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 got liabilities to it as well to connect to an OBD and to to get all those things. So that's the main reason you need this. And of course, that's the reason we didn't have these types of systems before because it was very expensive and people said, oh, we can't afford it. You know, we're making maybe fifty, a hundred dollars on a vehicle end to end as a logistics provider. I can't spend you know a hundred dollars on a GPS. So that's the reason we, um, we we believe that this type of system, ultimately, like Rocky said, and that there will be a connection in the cloud because it makes sense. But some data is real time during the driving. Some data is during transportation and logistics. Okay, thank you. So I. Yeah, I don't have any question at the moment uh, in this direction. I, I just, I mean, also want to go online and, and uh, take more deeply look. I, I, I did it already, I have to say, and it looks really great and, and promising. It's uh, because all these systems uh, are not that new. I mean, uh, mostly, mostly fleets and people use them already like... Uh, Closely ten years, I would say, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a new in the point that it seems to be really really simple, and and this is uh, like by all kind of these uh, softwares and and all kind of systems, the, the main reason has been in the past that uh, you always have to create something uh, new, something whole system where you need then already like some kind of IT personnel who is all the time like uh, supporting you and, and, and then it doesn't work and then it's, uh, you know, all kinds of problems. And then this seems to be different in that way. Okay. Thanks. Which is why the problem persists that, right? The timing is great here. Hey, Joel, I was wondering what, what are your thoughts? Anything that can help the dealer connect the OEM and the transporter and get the vehicles to the dealerships quicker would be best. So I'm all for it. I like that uh, we're actually doing something other than uh, just a, a simple uh, ETA, you're actually able to track it. So um, I'd love to hear more. <clears throat> What what did you think? Of, did you see the um, when Gil was live drawing boxes and getting data right then and there? I found that compelling. Yeah, mostly on tracking. If you had a huge lot and you could see everything where it is, that would help. If it's in your recon or uh, uh, your body shop, you know exactly where the car is. Right, and then anticipation. Um, cause that's, that's an interesting point too. There's actually been so many interesting points. I'm running out of paper. Um, uh, but, uh, yes. So then within a business process, you have that example, you can anticipate that it takes that worker a certain amount of time to do something. So then you know what you can anticipate to be next. Obviously there's a lot more to it than that. But there are so many interesting points that, um, what happens now? With with our cars, are you talking about? Uh, well, that was a proverbial global what happens now. Yeah. But um, I, I, think, I think one of the things I'm thinking, I think, Joel, you'll be interested in this, is that, uh, Matt, it'll, we, I guess we look forward to finding out what happens now with with where you're at. And hopefully we can get some more information on that maybe in the in the coming months or so. Um, but I guess, yeah, this is a global question. What do we do? Like what happens now? How do we how do we get more information and see more and learn more? Uh, I guess this question is to Jason Wolf. What do we do next? So I think if you look at what's happening today, the industry standard is is very manual. People, uh, you know, like Matt mentioned, there's multiple steps that people have to check the box and move the vehicle to PDI to different steps before it goes. That's that's unfortunately that's the best practice. And I think to Henry's point, it's it's not out of lack of 
very sophisticated technology. It's about, about the cost of that technology and the length of time that it takes to implement it, which made it prohibitive. So it kept this industry in, in kind of, like I said, between the manufacturer's floor and the customer's door, it kept that kind of in, in the old world where we're doing things with clipboards and we're doing things manually. I think now is the time that, and it's not just Vlog doing this, crowdsourcing, you know, you've heard of ways that tells us how long it's going to take us to get from point A to B. We used to do that with helicopters and sensors in the road and all these traffic measuring devices. No one thought, you know, that things can change until someone said, okay, people are driving anyway. I can pick up their signal of their speed and calculate in the cloud how long it's going to take me to get from point A to point B with an accuracy that no one's ever seen in history. So I think this is the type of shift that's happening now where we've digitized all these endpoints and we're collecting data all the time and someone has to sit down in the cloud and make and create the software that actually will interpret it. Like you said, tell me, you know, if I know that the vehicle's in the washing station, what is the expected result next? It's statistics, but at the end of the day, it's real life. It's going to tell you exactly what happens to that car in five minutes, in an hour, in two days, and it just keeps getting smarter. Yep. And I'd add on to that, you know, one of the big things that I'm excited about coming from logistics background and particularly warehousing, uh, moving over to car transport, is that some of the things that are were standard in warehousing and four walls and racking and everything, standard 10 years ago, seems to finally be coming over into car hauling and parking lots. You know, when people look at it, they go, well, that should be easier than a mil, you know, 5,000 cars should be easier than a million boxes in an Amazon warehouse. But it's actually kind of not. You know, a lot of it is related to cost because, you know, the margins just aren't there and the quantities just aren't there. Uh, but some of it has to do with the infrastructure and the, you know, availability of power, internet, connection. That's getting better, better, and better every day. Uh, you know, when we look to build new apps within our platform, you know, everyone keeps, well, can it work offline? Can it work offline? And at least here locally in the U.S. and North America, it's becoming less and less of a dream that there's nothing offline anymore. There's very few parts of the U.S. that are is offline. Um, and so some of those concepts about, hey, tracking a package or a vehicle real time is not only cost effective, but the implementation is minimal. Um, and so whether it's Vilog or someone else, it, technology is catching up with the car transport, at least in the yard management space. Uh, and so, you know, what's next, you know, from our standpoint is that aggregation of data, finding out, picking the right pieces of data that we want to you know, look internally at a productivity, but also expose externally to our customers, to dealers, uh, you know, what's the right amount, what's the right frequency, all those uh, catchy terms uh, in technology. But that's, we're start, starting to get to the point where we can actually accurately and cost effectively gather those data points and start producing them for whichever party needs them. Yeah, and this is, this is, this is what we're excited about on in the rail side, right? Because like I said, we're, <clears throat> we're producing our own telematics now, but ultimately what we want to see is an efficiency in the system, right? And that would be us producing rail cars that the railroads can use that have the telematics that um, can ping a system because it's all agnostic, ping a system saying by log, our cars are going to arrive at this point. Vilog notifies dispatches drivers to pick them up, which tells them exactly where to pick them up and then tells the dealership these cars will be here on this hour of this day, right? And it's all efficient and there's less stop and there's more turn and there's and there's more notification and there's more visibility. And it's an agnostic system and I think it's an evolution, much to Jason's point, it's gonna be an evolution. There's gonna be a lot of different iterations of different systems and ultimately you know i think the fittest will survive and and coalesce at some point 
Yeah. And ultimately, the OEMs are going to continue to keep expecting more and more of this. <laughs> and the OEMs will keep expecting. I more. mean, that's it's it started as, hey, what's in my yard? Down to I need to know where Vin is and where it's been for the last. And that's just in I've only you know been with Jack Cooper for almost six years, and that's that transformation's happened within you know six years, probably a little bit longer than that, but it's just and accelerating. Sounds hey. great. Sounds very great. I would still uh, give like a one more question to Jason. That uh, there, what is the backup? I mean, in in the in the case now that I mean everything is like it should be and, and in the cloud and and uh, everything is fine. But if it doesn't work, what happens then? That's that's a great question. Um, so first of all, in in you know you you always have your list of things that are there. It won't give you real time insights if if something goes down, but like Matt said, the world, both, you know, the level of Amazon as a cloud provider and things, as well as the telcos is getting to those 999 degrees of, of, of thing. But, you know, from our perspective, we produce the last list that you have. And if the world goes down, you're, you're basically using that last list and you're kind of back to where we are today for most people. So yeah, it's a great question, and you can always work on on backups for the last mile. But at the end of the day, if the cloud goes down, we've got a lot bigger problems than uh, finding my car. For sure. I mean, the the question just was also this: that I mean, like I mentioned already earlier, the the thing is uh, how you transmit your your data, because uh, like here, like. Uh, I mean, if we pick up a car from uh, from a manufacturer, and let's say now happens something with the cloud, even for a half an hour, okay. or with your system, so then the question is just that: uh, what is my last data? You say you can print out like a list. You say, and, and yeah, no, no, sorry, I didn't understand your question. That's a great question, and that's a question that happens all the time. You will have times that you know a vehicle location won't be picked up. But the way the system works is it collects the data. Let's say someone, even without an app, just moved one of the cars and moved it to somewhere else. So it's dark. It disappeared for a time, a day, an hour, half an hour. It's not on the map. But once anybody that has the app gets into its vicinity or communication is resumed, it builds back the picture and it shows it. I was talking about more about a catastrophic failure that you just have the list and you don't have any real time visibility. But if there's periodic drops, which happens for sure, or, or errors, someone might just move things without having uh, anybody around with the app. But when it gets to its new location and someone else walks by, it'll pick up, it'll say, oh, this VIN, this car used to be over here. Now that's over there to readjust the real time map. So great question, Henrik, because it doesn't mean that at every given second it has to be 100% accurate, but it very quickly resets to the accurate situation. And okay. just, and just to add to that, so for, on the technology level, there are some safeguards, right? So for example, if you, and there was also a question in, in, in the chat, if your phone, uh, doesn't have reception for some reason. Okay, the phone will continue aggregating the data and once it's had reception, it will be sent out and every piece of data is, time, is timestamped. So it will be able to, to rebuild the history as accurately. And from a cloud integration perspective, uh, we, we have a set of APIs that allows to, to stream all the data to your systems as well. Right, so it's not, you, you don't necessarily need to solely rely on Velo Cloud. If you have your own system for inventory management, uh, this data will be streamed in real time or, or in batches, whatever you prefer, right? And you will always have an updated backup of the system on your end. And this is saved where? So, Velo Cloud runs on a, on AWS. We have several regions for uh, for high availability. The data is stored and encrypted for each customer. 
In addition to that, this data can be streamed into your system. So if you, if you have an ERP system, okay. right, or some other back office application, we can, uh, in addition to storing it on our end, we can also provide it to you and, and, and you will basically have a backup of, of whatever granularity you want, right? You can get the location, you can get just the history or, or more aggregated history. Okay, got it. Okay, good. And so whether you're a single carrier or you're in the yard with 5,000 cars, can you ping a car then? If you're, right, it, it's gone dark for that 30 minutes? Can you wake up the signal or, or just a question that occurred to me? A gr great question. You, you don't need to ping it because the car's pinging all the time. What you need to do is someone needs to be in its vicinity and then it'll automatically bring back to the uh, bring back to the real time virtual map. When Matt, when you were talking about five thousand cars versus a million Amazon boxes, I can't help but think that when I see warehouses and robots and everything's moving around, it's a, it's a great analogy because there are a million boxes being moved in just this harmony. And but whereas the five thousand cars, that's can be rather unmanageable, even in your own ecosystem, as you were mentioning. So, and and yes, I I would imagine the automaker doesn't understand why that would be. So, everybody, great panel, really interesting stuff. Anybody have any final thoughts? I think we're almost there. Yeah, I, I want to say thanks because this was an amazing group of people and it actually brings together the entire ecosystem. Um, you know, having software that you subscribe to and keeps updating with you as a service to to us and to, I think, to, to the world, how we're moving forward is going to be the only way to consume things because you can see the value at, at every single asset and you could associate that cost to it. And I think that this is this is exactly the right place to to talk about this, because people haven't yet made that transition. They're still thinking of buying things, not subscribing to them, and implementing, not using. And we're in this, you know, a year and a half after COVID, we're doing these online sessions with Zoom and YouTube and all this together. This is the new world. It is real time and. You know, our kids are going to demand to know where the car is, like the OEMs are demanding it. They're demanding it because their customers are demanding it. So we can't live in the dark anymore. Right. Good points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Jason, for um, so much information. I know you gave me a lot to think about. And in this, it, I, I do almost... When we first started talking, I relished the fact that I continue to see so many questions in ongoing events and conversations that um, this is a big one. Anyone else with any, with any final thoughts? Jason? Black Widow, any, any final thoughts? Well, my brain's churning because, I mean, we're always looking for where the car's at, right? Dude, where's my car? So, um... You know, with everybody involved here, you know, I think it's been very antiquated and COVID has been bad, but also helped us launch in a digital age. So, uh, you know, not not that the, uh, the Jasons of the world, right, that come up with something that, you know, fixes a real problem, you know, and organizes it so that, you know, everybody can prosper. So um, I don't think, uh, Jay, I don't think your show would be very good if we were still on dial up, right? Um, it wouldn't work so well. So everything's <laughs> got to catch up to its time. And, um, you know, uh, everybody on here has got a specialty. And I think, you know, bringing this together to be able to, you know, bring the transparency, um, you know, if I can certainly help by providing a quality image and the condition of it while it's being located um, to be able to speed up that process of the consumer or the dealer, um, I'm happy to help do that. Um, so I'd like to learn more as well, um, you know, to be able to uh, locate it faster, picture it faster, get it to the consumer, and get it safely transported to uh, our buyers. 
I like what I, I like what I hear and uh, to meet everybody. Um, and I'd like to know more as well, Jason. And you know, Jason, because you say, "Dude, where's my car?" So I, I had to find that. I chose the Matrix meme because I didn't want to, like, "Dude, where's my car?" That's that's your thing, man. I can't, you know, <laughs> I couldn't step on that. So. No, that's fine. I say all kinds of crazy stuff, but uh, <laughs> you know, something will stick, right? Well, it stuck with me, dude. Where's now? I've got manufacturing floor to the customer's door. Jason Wolf, I owe that to Jason Wolf. I, I like that one. That's really like good. It. Final thoughts? Anybody else? Are we there? Yeah, just change, thank change thank you world. for yeah. Thanks for inviting us to this interesting uh, topic and service and great panel. Great to be amongst you all. Jeff, thank you for for joining us. And that's one of the things that I um, I relish that, yeah, that is my thing. Thank goodness we are beyond dial-up. And I'll tell you what, though, uh, Rocky, corporate America not loving YouTube is kind of like having dial-up. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it, it wasn't. I just got a new computer. wasn't on my radar that I needed the permissions, and it was tonight that I tried to log on. I'm like, oh yeah. But so. it, that actually harkens harkens me back. Uh, it takes me back to uh, so YouTube started in 2005. By like 2007, 2008, I had a few videos and I was trying to share. And yeah, anybody in corporate world was like, what? Are you trying to send me... Just send me the VHS. I'll take a look at it. <laughs> the VHS. Right. <laughs> so things do change fast. IOT, Internet of Things, right? Yeah. That's the thing. That's what makes the beacon the constant. It's yep. a thing now. Be kind, so, rewind. Be kind, <laughs> rewind. What's up? Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, this, this is good stuff. This is good stuff, Jason, so... I want to know more um, from my standpoint, for sure. So. Thanks, Jason. We need to integrate those systems so we can use your smarts from the visuals. You bet. That'll give you guys even, even more time to get more people involved so you can you know, triangulate exactly where the car is. We'll probably piss off some people because you know there will be no finger pointing or clipboard throwing, but uh, you know somebody's got to do it. It'll make this everything better in the long run. So. So many of our customers are saying damage. I need to know damage. And um, we need sensors that can see, not only uh, find location, but see actually what's going on. You guys are there. And I just shared a link. I hope I got this right. I put it in the live chat. You go to calendly.com forward slash vlog. Is that right, Jason? You can schedule a, I think. I went to Calendly and I double checked it. I think you can. If you go there, if you click on that link, you can schedule a demo, 15 minute, 30 minute. Uh, yeah, or you can just old fashioned, not VHS old fashioned, but you can just send me an email and uh, we'll take care of you. We'll call you. Perfect. Hey, I'm looking at the screen on here. Do we have J? I mean, I'm called Jason Wolf. I'm going to call him JW from now on. We got two Jasons on here. J so, yeah. so, JW. Do we have a tracking device on Ty? Is anybody triangulating where Ty is? is he not we, that, <laughs> now that is a brilliant idea. Did he remove the device? I thought we got to keep tabs on him. He's not he on. He turned his phone know, off. Probably. What we could do is we could turn him into yeah, like the space monkey, where <laughs> we're always photographing him and tracking right. him. Okay, I just nice. want to make sure he's not missing or something. I mean, we need JW to get that installed quickly because where Ty's at and where he's at on the lot. I mean, anyway, where he's going, I mean, if there's a dark spot, there's a very possibility that the Ty could be walking by the auction or wherever uh, to triangulate where these cars are. He's a human just a, beacon. Just a thought. He is kind of a beacon. I mean, yeah, I, I miss him already. I don't know where he's at. Uh, well, you know what? It's after 10 o'clock, so he just he just cuts the wires and, and Locked out. goes dormant. I think we heard that word do, <laughs> dormant earlier, um, and I and I, yeah, I think VHS is a great way to uh, to kind of wrap up. That's how fast things have changed. And actually, and I happen to know this: VHS was still being used in some industries 
uh, easily 15 years ago. Which now seems like, right? I think some vehicles run on VHS now. And they're, you know, they're being banned in Brussels in 2030. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the owner's manual of the uh, vehicles, you know. I mean, now you uh, years ago it showed you how to adjust the valve springs, and now when you look at the owner's manual, it says don't drink the battery acid, you know. So, I mean, everything changes in time. You know? Right on, right on. <laughs> um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at ten fifteen, and um, I just I, I really appreciate everybody joining us tonight, and I do want to say that if you get another invite from me in a future panel, don't be surprised. But I'll 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 be gentle with those invites and try and you know um, only find places that I think it makes sense. But but on the reverse, you see an opportunity, let me know how I can help. I really really appreciate your input and time tonight. Thanks, Thanks. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You all. Thank you, Che. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay, we will end the meeting there. Jason Gill, great job tonight. Um, that was so much information. Jason, great presentation. Gill, great demo. And Hendrick, glad you got to tune in and join us. Um, so I will now officially end this meeting and wrap up the show. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap on Vlog. So we did it. Um, and this is, you know, um, wow. International. This was an international global logistics show. That's cool, man. Episode 190. It only took 198 episodes to get there, but we did it. So thank you so much for your time, participation, questions. I know I didn't get to a lot of questions, but... Um, some panels I've seen where I just want to let it go, let it just l let it run and, and get out of the way. I want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, if you're looking for a dispatcher or a fully licensed broker, check us out on Thursdays. Sue is my co-host. Mark Grodeke, Superflow Systems. Thank you for what you do. Check out dispatchcenter.com. You see how Larry knows the quotes. There's a lot more to it. Visit DispatchCenter.com and Mark is often in the live chat. Let us know how we can help. I want to thank Blank Widow Imaging. Jason Hawk was here tonight. And if you have a question for Black Widow, you can you know you can schedule a demo. Go to BlackWidowImaging.com and schedule, schedule a demo. Learn more about high-resolution 4K images like that. Um, I also want to thank National Vehicle Transporters Alliance, NVTA, helping small and mid-sized carriers, savings, discounts, etc., and more. Visit GoNVTA.org. And also, thank you, Vlog Tracking Solutions, Jason and Gil. So much information tonight and the full panel. I want to thank everybody that was on the panel. It was amazing. It was really interesting. It was compelling. And there's a lot more where that came from because clearly this tracking thing is, again, now that we brought so much attention to it, you know, there's already attention to it, but keep your ears perked. You're going to keep seeing tracking in the news because we need a good solution like Vlog. So thank you so much, Jason and Gil, for bringing that information to us. I want to thank everybody in the live chat. Thank you for tuning in, staying with us, I know it's a lot, um, and you can let people know, hey, check out the podcast. Apple, Google, Spotify, you name it. This podcast is everywhere now. It really is. Go to autotransportintel.com. You can click on podcast, click on sign up, become an ATI insider. Let me know how we can help you. And Kimberly, thank you so much. Put it in the live chat. What is your show idea? Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Let me know what you want to talk about. It's neat that, like, uh, here's a secret. I'll tell you right now. Vendor Flow, that show, I just met Eric a few weeks ago. Started talking, put a show together, bang! Let's do a show. Let me know how I can help. Uh, and thank you so much again for tuning in. There's the final slide. You guys, stay safe. Please do join us. If you are in uh, the carrier space, equipment, 
broker, dispatcher. Join us tomorrow, Wednesday, DOT Compliance. will be live at noon. If this is Driver Safety Week. We're going to be also talking about, uh, let's see, there's that uh, Insurance Act, um, lawsuit stuff, all the good times on DOT Compliance. So please join us for that. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Peace out. Here comes the car hauler. <laughs>